Okay. Does anybody know what we're studying tonight? What did you study last time? From the fourth commandment. Uh huh. What comes after the fourth commandment? The fifth. Oh. Okay, before I get going now, because I'm a little bit discombobulated, I need to take the attendance. Okay, how do I do this? I have to. Uh, I need to go to groups. There we go. Groups. And I need to go to junior high. And then I need to mark attendance. Okay. And then I have to pick out. This is the 28th, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is Rebecca all? Rebecca here. Yeah. You're Rebecca? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I don't know you guys yet. Although I see you with your brother and your dad quite a bit when you're taking drive up communion or when your dad is. Okay, Peter. There's Peter. And Elizabeth. I knew you. Whoops. I just erased Peter because I'm not hitting the right spot. And Caitlin is here. Just another Delamont. And Curtis. Oh, Curtis is almost always here. Yeah, I'm green. Are you related to the green girls? Yes. Ah. Oh. They're so sweet and nice and they would never give you a hard time. Right? Yeah. Where am I dreaming, huh? <laughs> okay, Tyler Kelly. And I remember Tyler from last year. And Noah Lawrence. Another Lawrence. Are you quieter than your brother? <laughs> okay. Done. Okay, that takes care of the business. Now, you know, the Ten Commandments are always a challenge for me because I am nowhere near as knowledgeable as pastor on all of this stuff. But there is something. You all have a piece of paper in front of you. You know, the Ten Commandments, depending on which church you're in, they have different numbers for which commandment is which. So I, I've copied this chart. We are with the Roman Catholic and the Lutherans. You see that? That's how our numbering goes. And it lets you see how our interpretation of which one is the first, second, third is different than the Anglicans or uh, the Baptists. They're the ones under Orthodox and other Christians. Notice that they've divided the Ten Commandments differently than we have. Now, it's my understanding that they're all the Ten Commandments and they're all right, except different churches and different groups kind of interpret them a little bit differently. I wanted you to see this because that way, if you have a friend that starts talking about the Ten, ten Commandments and they talk about the third, they talk about the third uh, commandment and says, you shall, or uh, you uh, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. And you say, wait a minute, that's the second commandment, not the third. Okay, now that gives you an idea of why some of the other churches have a little bit different slant on which one is which. Okay, and if you look down at our fifth, which is everybody else's sixth, our fifth is thou shalt, or excuse me, 
you shall not murder. Okay. Now, before we start the lesson, before I have you open your book, I want to get some definitions out of, out in the open here, so you can uh, so we can be all on the same page. Okay. Uh, I don't like these masks that make my nose get runny. You know. Uh, anyhow, getting back to this, there's we need to know for instance, you know, I'm old. So I learned the Ten Commandments, King James Version. And that one says, Thou shalt not kill. Wait a minute. Thou shalt not kill. That means that if we have somebody who's killed a whole family and the state puts them to death, is the state breaking one of the commandments. So because of this conflict, how about I was in the Marine Corps and I went through training that taught me to kill is good. Now wait a minute. King James Version said, thou shalt not kill. What is this business about the, to kill is good? I mean, they used to make like they, they used to make us march around and say, one, two, three, four, to kill is good, to kill is good. You know, but we were getting ready to go to war. And that, that caused a lot of conflict because I always learned that thou shalt not kill. So they revised that, the commandment, to fit. You know, as time goes on, things kind of change. Okay, and uh, we get to the point where um, certain things don't mean the same thing as they did a few years ago. So because of that, they reinterpreted, reinterpreted, boy, that's a word. Okay, they came across and said, thou shalt not murder, because... When one soldier kills another soldier, that is the taking of a life lawfully. In other words, you didn't premeditate this killing. You're basically killing to save yourself. And when countries are at war, you know, they, they kill because that's what they have to do. So murder is the unlawful taking of a lie. Did you know that? But we're Lutherans. I've got to take this off a little bit in order to get this going. I, I should keep going, but I need to take it off. I'll keep my distance from you. Oh, now you see this ugly face. Uh. Did Megan ever tell you how I usually pick out a kid to tease? Yes. Ah! Is there anybody who's going to have their feelings hurt? Because I won't pick on you. I made Megan cry once. That made me feel so bad. Ah. Ah. Okay. Anyhow, so there are some definitions we need to kind of go over. Okay, if I can find the definitions. I've got all these papers here. I bet I left that one at home. Okay. Okay, I can remember what it is. You know, we have different definitions of taking somebody's life. We have a homicide. Do any of you know the difference between homicide and murder? 
okay? A homicide is where you kill somebody, but you didn't plan it out. Okay, murder is when you think, I don't like that guy, I'm going to kill him. And how am I going to kill him? I'm going to take the gun and shoot him. And I'm going to lay and wait until he goes by someplace where he can't see me. And then I'm going to wait until he walks by and then I'm going to ping him in the head. Okay, that's murder. Because you have forethought it. You've planned it. That's a murder. And now we're going to get into some touchy, touchy subjects here in a few minutes. Uh, okay, that's a murder. Okay, now, suppose uh, you say, ha ah, you really ticked me off. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to plan, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to shoot you. And so I shoot at you, but I hit somebody else instead of you. Okay, that's a homicide. Because I didn't plan to kill that guy. Okay, that's a homicide. It'll get you just much, as much time in prison, but that's a homicide. As opposed to a murder. Now, and this is where the definition gets. One other thing, how about if you kill somebody by accident? You're driving, and somebody runs out in front of you, and you can't help it. Okay? They might get you. There's Curtis. They might get you for manslaughter, but the penalty isn't as strong because you didn't try to kill them. You tried not to kill them, but they're dead anyway. Okay, that's manslaughter. Okay, suppose you go out and get drunk and you and your buddy are driving down the road and you're driving and you have an accident. Okay, you, you killed your buddy. He's dead. Okay, that's manslaughter. Now, here's where it gets touchy with people. Suppose a woman gets pregnant. You guys are old enough, you know how that happens. Okay. And she says, hey, I'm not in a position to have this baby. So she chooses to have an abortion. Now, according to the law of the land, that's okay. She can do that. According to the teachings of our church, that's not okay. Because we planned to end that baby's life. Okay? So our church, the, the Missouri Synod, the, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, they interpret the taking of that innocent child's life as murder. So according to our interpretation of the fifth commandment, we don't do abortions. And I realize that we're kind of in the minority. You know what? Did you know that there are several types of Lutheran churches? Did you know that we have the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, the ELCA? They're a lot more liberal than we are. LCMS, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Now, they believe that as long as you do the abortion before the fetus becomes, you all know what fetus is, right? That's, that's a baby that hasn't been born yet. That's a baby in the, in the womb, okay? If they say that the fetus is not viable yet, and who knows for sure what that is, well then an abortion's okay. But we're not ELCA, we're Missouri Senate. And we don't think that that's right. And you know what? LCMS is who we belong to. So that's the rule book we play by. Okay, and you can get all sorts of arguments from different people because they have different viewpoints. 
But even though it is legal according to the law, it is not legal according to our belief structure. Okay, I just covered some really difficult stuff. Okay, so now we're going to start the lesson. Do you all have your books? Is your book here somewhere? Okay, everybody get your books out. And I want you to turn to page 53. Oh, wait a minute. Your, your page is 49. I have to remember that my pages are different than your pages. There are some more definitions that we need to iron out in order to study the fifth commandment. Am I boring you to death? Should I fly the drone around some more? If we get done in time, maybe I'll let you guys fly the drone. <laughs> Peter would like that. Peter likes tech. So does Curtis. I like video game. Well, this is like a video game, but I hope you fly better than I did. Okay. <laughs> now then. Uh, definitions. Ooh. Okay. In your book, you have a place where you're supposed to consider things. When we think about God's plan for us, and we're his human creatures, we think about how we should love other people, you know, in their times of need, or just how we should love other people. Now, in the commandments, they and the Bible. Yes, sir. Uh, can I get a pencil? Oh, absolutely. Could you reach into that drawer and, and pull out the box of pencils? Sure. Yes. I should have passed them out before I got started. Would you pass one out to each person? Whoops. Uh, I'm trying to keep my distance from everybody. What if I have a highlighter or a pencil? I need a highlighter. I need a highlighter. Highlighter. Thank you. Highlighter. Yeah, you guys like writing with crayons. Thank you. I'm going to put this back on for a little while just because I feel safer. <laughs> okay, while he's passing out the pencils, we need to know what a neighbor is. And did Pastor go over that yet? A neighbor is virtually any other human being because we want to treat like uh, love thy neighbor. Have you ever heard that expression? I love your neighbor. Okay, and who is your neighbor? It's anybody in your community. It's anybody in your state. It's anybody in your country. It's anybody on the planet. Because if that person is God's creature, he's your neighbor. Because you're God's creature. Okay? <coughs> So, whenever we use the term neighbor in the commandments, we're talking about any one of God's creatures. Plain enough? Okay, that's one of the definitions. Now, what I want you to do, according to this, is you need to, in each square, I need you to write three things that you could do to help your neighbor in his home, okay, in his town, or in his country. What can you do? Because thou shalt not murder. Here's another definition. Any time According to the teachers, the teachings of our church, any time you put down one of God's creatures, 
You're murdering their spirit. And so we interpret that as murder. Okay? So we don't want to, we don't want to speak ill of anybody, except I do it sometimes for jokes. Because I like to pick on people sometimes. And I do it only because it helps keep you guys alive. Otherwise, you get bored to death. Who in here do you like to see picked on the most? You guys haven't been together enough to figure that out yet. I used to pick on your brother all the time. Did he tell you that? If I didn't pick on him, he'd find a reason to pick on him. I used to pick on your brother a lot. He's fun to pick on, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I used to say things like, uh, you got a face only your mother could love. <laughs> or I would say something like, uh, Cameron, if Moses would have seen you, there would have been an 11th commandment. Thou shalt not commit ugly. See, I'm not picking on anybody here right now. I'm just trying to liven you up a little bit. Okay. Now then. <laughs> That's why I put my, cup and my mask on because I'm starting to cough a little bit. Okay. So write down three things. Okay. Three things that you could do to take care of one of your neighbor's needs at home. These days, feeding them is one of the things you can do because some people are short of food even. Uh, so let's write, and then after you've written them, I'm going to ask, I'm just going to point at somebody and they're going to share what they put down somewhere. Okay? I have to get this all done by seven. Caitlin, has anybody ever told you how, how much you look like your sister? All the time. All the time. The only way I can tell the difference between you is you wear glasses and she knows them. Okay, are you about done? Do you have three things in each square? Keep going. You know, you can say, you can, you can put the same thing in more than one box. Because feeding your neighbor would fit in all three boxes, wouldn't it? Oh, I just gave you an idea, didn't I? Uh, you can cheer them up. Does it hurt if I give you some ideas? might try to find a way to pay somebody's electric bill. You know, we do a lot of those things right here to people in the community. Our church members can do that from time to time.
Okay, we should have to fill it in by now. Okay, ready? Which one? Whichever one you want. Uh, I put mow their lawn for your home. Good idea. Peter. Um, you've done financial help. Very good. Kate. Um, you can clean up public places for them. Oh, good idea. Oh, good idea. Although sometimes that gets, sometimes I don't appreciate my neighbors that live in the park over there too much because we have to fix the damage they do to the church. Uh, when they say love thy neighbor, it is sometimes easier to love some neighbors more than other neighbors. But we can still keep it in the positive tense, right? Okay, now, the next task, we need to pull out your catechism. <clears throat> we need to go to page 85. Okay, this is where we uh, learn more about defining your neighbor, who your neighbor is. Okay, I want you to look at question number 59 on page 85. Look at that page. Look at that question 59, who is our neighbor? I want you to read that. Then, when you see that figure of a neighbor down there, I want you to think of somebody you think of as your neighbor, and I want you to tell us their approximate age, ways you can tell who they are, you know, like some of the things, like a sense of humor or, you know, things like that. What their abilities are, what uh, nationality they are, and especially now we see that we we have people from all different nationalities now in our country. Okay, is there anything? Well, read that last item. It's so small in my book, and I'm having trouble. I'm probably going to have to. Have surgery on my eyes because I can't read that last one yet. Caitlin, could you read it for me? Because your letters are bigger. Is there anything that disqualifies someone as our neighbor? Yes. I guess you could answer that with a yes or no answer. But if you answer with a yes, you have to tell me what it is. And I started out by telling you what neighbors are, according to the Bible. While you're writing, I'm going to go ahead and say something. When Jesus talked about a neighbor, he was talking about any, any human that God created. That's what a neighbor was to Jesus. In other words, everybody was his neighbor. With us, 
we think of a neighbor who is somebody who lives next door to us. That's the difference between a biblical term and our real world terminology. So we all get that right? I have to get you to wake up. You don't talk much, do you? Uh, that's not a problem with your brother. He talks quite a bit, doesn't he? <laughs> and your brother talks even more. <laughs> Your kids sit there, your brothers and sisters, your brother and sisters just expound wisdom. And your sister really pays it to part of it. Yeah. Sometime before next week. 
because this will give you a much better idea of what Christians think of as far as murder, what murder is. And of course, they have this, the, the uh, biblical reference, like Psalm 10 It's about the wicked man. You also want to read about Cain and Abel. Cain murdered his brother. Yes. And that was murder because he planned on how to do it. Okay, so go ahead and read those pages and then we'll discuss it a little bit. you read the whole thing now. So I want you to commit to reading this whole text, this whole thing, when you get home. Right now, what I need you to do is I need you to find, write down four things that you can think of that you can do to not harm your neighbor. Thinking of anybody in your next door, next town, next street, you know, anybody. What can you do to, to not harm them? And then look in the next square and I want you to write down three things that you could write about looking after your neighbor, helping them. <clears throat> I want you to get that and then we're going to have an open discussion at least the last 10 minutes. Rebecca, we call you Rebecca or Becky? No, Rebecca is fine. Becca? Anybody ask you where your heart is? I'm just trying to use a little humor.
okay, now what I need you to do, I want you to underline on your topics here that you have written your answers. I want you to underline the one thing that you think would be the easiest for you to do. And then I want you to put a circle around the thing that you think would be most difficult to do. You must go to work on Christian. I know. I recognize the, the shirt. Yeah. My wife's family lives in Ripon. Okay. They all call all the animals. I know. You know why they're almonds? There are almonds when they're on the ground because you've got the yellow Yeah. Ripon is full of Dutch people. Like 90 of them are all extremely pale and long. Yeah. know that I worked with your grandma when she worked for the school. I didn't know that. Yeah, many years and I knew your grandpa too. That's cool. He was really a neat guy. Okay, are we pretty much done? Because we've got a little over 10 minutes to go. So I want each of you to share what you've learned tonight. So, Curtis, what did you learn tonight about what a neighbor is? Um, like a friend. Okay, what else? Um, that you can help them to make it possible. But what is God's definition, or what is the church's definition, or Jesus's definition of what a neighbor is. Caitlin? A neighbor is anyone in the whole entire like globe anywhere. Any human being who is one of God's creatures, right? Very good. Okay. Uh, what's the difference between murder and a homicide? Murder is you're doing it intentionally and then and you plan it. Okay. And a homicide is an unintentional kill. Okay. Um, and uh, Tyler, you're the oldest. What did you learn tonight about abortion? What is abortion? Well, when a woman's pregnant, they can not kill the, kill the baby, but before it's born, if they're not in the, if, if they're not in a position to raise a child, they can. I don't want to say kill it because that sounds wrong. Well, it doesn't sound right, but it is, I guess. Well, in our belief system, it's wrong. It's it's actually what we think in our church, church teaching. It's a form of murder because you plan an abortion and you're taking the child's life, the innocent child's life. And this is, by the way, we know that this is not a popular belief in our society, right? But it's what we as LCMS Lutherans believe. And I said LCMS on purpose because other Lutheran bodies don't have the same belief as we do. We're much closer to the Catholics. Okay. And I should bring this out. Uh, the Catholics, and we do too, basically, is as soon as the baby is conceived, they're God's creation. And they're, if you, if you stop the pregnancy intentionally, well then our teaching is that that's, that's a murder. Yeah. But you know, one of the things that we need to bring out is remember, it's a sin 
to have an abortion. But also remember that if we if we feel bad about it and we repent our sin, remember that we're saved by faith and faith alone. That's one thing I really want you to remember is that as long as you repent your sin, you're saved by faith and faith alone. And why is that? Can you tell me why? Okay, why is it that we're saved by faith alone if we commit a sin or break a commandment? Because God loves us. Well, yes. And what did God do because he loved us? Yes. Precisely. He let his son suffer and die on the cross as reparations for uh, as, as a way to redeem us from our sins. And breaking a commandment is a sin. Some of them are worse than others. Okay? What else did we learn? Did we learn that not all churches number the commandments the same. Okay. I'm having a hard time getting a lot. Is there anything that anybody here feels like they would like to say about what we, we talked about today? I'm trying to get some, some action out of you guys. I function best as a teacher when people have something to say. And you guys are the quietest bunch I've seen in five years. Sometimes it's okay to be noisy. I'm smiling under the mask. Okay. <laughs> we'll go for another couple minutes and then I'll let, let a couple of you take a shot at flying this, this uh, contraption here. Okay, we learned the definition of a neighbor. I want you to keep that with you. And uh, I want you to be sure that you read pages 85, 86, and 87 in your uh, catechism before next week. And would you do me another favor since you're taking your books home with you? Would you somewhere on the page, anywhere on the page where you have a blank spot, would you make a few notes about what you learned by reading those pages that I've assigned to you? Okay. I'm asking you to do homework. And I realize that sometimes it's hard to get to doing homework. But after Friday afternoon, this whole lesson will be on YouTube. And Pastor's going to email your parents on where to find it. Okay? I would like it if you guys would commit to going to YouTube and looking at the lesson so you can review everything we talked about. Okay? And we covered quite a bit tonight, but there's a lot of stuff we didn't cover. Okay? Can anybody think of something that we didn't cover that you have a question about? No questions? Oh. We are a ghost town. What? We are a ghost town. Yes. Okay. I have a question. Okay. You know, according to the teachings of our church, it would be wrong because there's adoption. There are so many people looking for adoptable ch children that there would be that a newborn baby uh, 
you know, would would be so adoptable that you could do it. Uh, I think, and some churches do say this. I I don't think of an exception in our church, but some churches will say if it's suppose. Do you know what hydrocephalia is? That's where the baby's brain, while it's in the mother's womb, is filled with water, and that baby probably isn't going to survive. You know? So there's the question. Uh, if you know that the baby is not going to have a life if they're born, is it okay then? That's one of those difficult questions. Um, personally, I know the teaching, the teachings of our church says no, you let the baby be born. And the baby will go on God's timetable. That's the teaching of our church. But I would have to pray on that and I would hope that I made the right decision. But it wouldn't be my decision because I wouldn't be the mother. But um, you know, I can just say according to the beliefs of our church. And you know what? I have this thing that came out of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. And I would like to read this to you. Just because something happens to be legal does not make it moral, ethical, or right. Abortion is perhaps one of the most dramatic examples of a situation where something is legal, but is very much a sin against God. Since 1973, abortions have been legal in the United States. Abortion remains a sin against God, whether it is legal in our society. Therefore, as Missouri Sanders Lutherans, we, uh, we must obey God rather than men. The church needs to inform its members that abortion is sinful and then encourage them as Christian citizens to use available legal means to change the law. Okay? That's the official position of our church. And when we talk about the fifth commandment, that's what we want to do. But you know, if it's legal, it's between you and God what your decision is. It's plainly written what we should do in that case. But, you know, is you have to make up your mind. Are you going to be punished by man or are you going to be punished by God? Well, you're probably not going to get punished for God as long as you repent of sin and you live, you know, you, you, remember that if you have a strong faith, if you have a strong faith in Jesus Christ, and you repent of your sins, you're going to be forgiven. That's the overall thing. But you don't look at a sin and intentionally do that sin. So it's it's something that I know I'm not knowledgeable enough to tell you what's right or wrong, except that I read to you what our church believes. And that's one of the difficult the really difficult parts to consider with the fifth commandment. And that's the lesson that I really wanted to bring home to you guys. You know, and, uh, I hope that somebody doesn't get really angry over me, but that's, that's the position as I understand it and as I read what comes from our, directly from our church leadership. So, everything you do is based on your conscience. And remember that, that is, 
It's your conscience and your faith that leads you most often to do the right thing. And that's what I want you to rely on. Rely on your faith, rely on your conscience, and rely on what you're learning in these confirmation classes. Because remember, that's what confirmation is all about, is to teach you what we believe as a church. Okay, you're all getting this? Very good. It's time to go. The edible snacks, please take with you. If you have not opened the water, I will put it back in the refrigerator. Uh, if you have not opened the juice pack, either take it with you or give it to somebody else. But the only thing you leave behind is you leave your trash behind. I'll pick it up and you, uh, you uh, take everything else. Okay? Thank you all for being here tonight. Oh, could you put the pencils out? Let me put the baskets out. And uh, have you drop the pencils on it when you leave. I hope I didn't bore you too much. See you all next time. I will be back until the 18th of November.